What's going on, beautiful people? Welcome to another episode of the Culture 316 Podcast. I'm one of your hosts and producers, Jordan Nahisi. Joined by your co-host, Mo. What is up, people? Thank you all so much for tuning in once again. Uh, Before we get to regular announcements, as you may or may not know, we finally have merch. Well, not we per se, but my dog over here, Mo, has merch. Get that MWO merch immediately. All right. The hockey jerseys are going to be announced soon. Um, But yeah, proud of my dog for stepping out and doing her own thing. Yes, I helped a little bit, but that's not the point. All right. No, I did not. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. This is Mo's doing. All right. That's the end. All right. So, but yeah, be sure to cop some MWO merch. It's available on, I think, our Sellify store, which is labeled Brooklyn Strong Style. So be able to cop that merch. Um, Also, uh, if you're listening on Apple or Spotify podcast, be sure to rate the show five stars and all that jazz. If you're watching us on YouTube, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. We got a lot to get into today. Um, I'm very excited about this show. So let's get underway. Obviously, the talk of the town last night. Well, as of the airing of this show two nights ago on AEW Dynamite, we saw the arrival, the long awaited arrival of Mercedes Monet. She was a part of the opening segment, had an opening promo. And at the end of the show, she had a stare down with uh, Julia Hart, who I believe is the current TBS champion. Uh, and this is after the main event, which was women. Uh, and that main event featured Willow Nightingale and Riho. So I wanted to know how you felt about Mercedes debuting in AEW. Um, okay, first of all, um, I love the way she came out and the way she looked like money. Um, number two, um, I love that they started off the show with her and they didn't make the fans like sit around and wait. It's just like they knew what Boston came here for. They wanted to see their girl. So I like how they just started off the top of the show, letting her talk just so like they don't um run into the issue of freaking um you know her her going over the time lapse they let her give as much time as possible even though her promo was not that long for her to you know talk about you know her arrival there yeah sorry made a little bit distracted by background (laughs) hi dad (laughs) that being said um what's no call it give me a moment talk about her arrival (laughs) just give me a moment (laughs) I'm so bad at working through distractions. Um, okay. Yeah. So I like the fact that she came in. She was able to talk about her arrival at AEW. Um, and she came in interestingly saying that I am home. And I like that the fact that she said that just because, um, you know, after everything that transpired, a lot of people thought that maybe she's going to go back to WWE. That's where she originally wanted to be at. That's where she wanted to make it big. And I just feel like the idea that she came in and she let everyone know, oh, guys, I'm home. I'm home. Like, it's kind of like kind of letting you know that she's going to be here for a while. And right. she plans on being here for a while. Um, a lot of people have been speculating that maybe she's just going to like, do this for a year or two, then go back to the E like everybody else. I like the fact that she kind of wanted to make this big point that um, I'm here to show up and the same way I changed the game over there, carry on here, you know? So that's kind of like the main takeaway I got that she wants to come and change the game yet again. And that yeah. nothing quite changed. Like I evolved, I changed, I took the break that I did. I think, I thank you guys for, um, watch me along my whole journey but like there's still work to be done and i'm going to do the work here so i love that part very much so i love the continuity of her bringing up willow um considering that last time we saw her she got injured and then she kind of went off the grid we did not know what was going to happen then Mm. um so i can't wait to go see that feud um but i also find it very interesting that she's basically gunning for the tbs championship i don't have anything wrong with it i actually think that it's smart to do because um, if you put her straight into like the world title division, then she doesn't really have a true chance to intersect with these people ever again. Yeah. Um, Sasha's always been the type to want to put over every single belt. And um, mm-hmm. I didn't take the tag team title seriously until it was on her and Bailey, mm-hmm. And then it was again on her and Naomi. So I think she's trying to do that with the TBS belt. Not that no one necessarily doesn't care at all, but I think she just wants you to care in general about the whole division, not just the top of the top. Yeah. Um, and she's going to try to do with that belt and that division 
unfortunately, what Jade couldn't fully accomplish because while Jade looked amazing with the belt and she did bring prestige to the belt, you know, her wrestling ability was in there to bring out the best matches out of everybody. Yeah. So you're going to get that opportunity with Mercedes before she jumps over for the world title. Yeah. So I just thought in general, it was very interesting. It was very engaging. It was very exciting. She looked like she was happy to be there. She sounded very proud of herself, very mature, very sure of herself. Um, and I just loved it. I love the overall presentation. And I'm actually a little bit more excited now that I've seen her presented than I was in pr- prior. Because I honestly was like kind of eh about her being over in AEW. But now yeah. she, she kind of grabbed my attention. What is your take on this? So for starters, I'm very, very glad that she, you know, that she showed up. I'm glad that she is back in wrestling. I'm glad that she's in AEW. Um, for just from a number standpoint, they, they released a stat saying over the past 12 hours, her return has generated over 8 million views uh, in comparison to Adam Copeland, who had 27 million when he debuted. CM Punk, when he debuted in AEW, uh, he had 46 million views. I kind of wanted to address that. I feel like Adam had a a little more shock value um, and CM Punk, obviously he was away from wrestling for 10 years. So I don't think that it's fair to compare all three just because they are some form of debut or return to wrestling in AEW. And it doesn't change the fact that Mercedes is a game changer, that she is someone who is a draw. Um, Her opening up the show and her closing out the show, I think is a sign for things to come. I believe that she is placing herself. For, well, before I even get into that, we acknowledge when Tony Khan does something wrong. We need to acknowledge when Co- Tony Khan is right. He was right. He was right in how he presented her, even just from the little details, her pulling up in the Maybach, like setting the tone, right? Then her opening promo, and then her in the main event, her facing off with Julia Hart, who's the TBS champion, and also having a little bit of a moment with Willow Nightingale, right? Like we kind of talked about before, before she goes into like that world title picture, I believe that it's super important for her to be in a situation where she's adding value. I mean, she's always she's already adding value by her presence. Right. But I feel like Tony Storm is kind of doing some amazing work as the AEW World's Women's Champion. And I believe that it's not a matter of just going after the world title right away, but putting you in putting yourself in a position where you're like, okay, what division needs the most help, which aspect of the program needs the most help? What needs to be elevated? And I think the TBS championship is the perfect thing that needs to be elevated. Um, Wow. That was mad funny because of that scene change. But um, (laughs) I think the TBS championship deserves to be elevated and deserves to be talked about. And I feel like, even though, like you said with Jade, I feel like when the belt went to Chris Statlander and then when it went to um, Julia, I think that it kind of lost a little bit of the momentum. So the fact that Mercedes is kind of positioning herself so that the belt has a little bit more oomph and that title scene has a little bit more prestige, I think is just like the best way to go. Um, And I just really, really love the CEO, like the CEO chants, the CEO gimmick. It feels like an evolution of Sasha into who she is now. And also, we got to give it up for Bailey and for Naomi. You want to talk about some real friends, right? They were in attendance supporting uh, Mercedes as she made her debut and and for y'all that's on the internet that's tribalistic and hating on them and saying that uh, there was somebody that said that Bailey should be out of the out of her WrestleMania match which uh like shut up bro oh but God. it's just so glad to see them support each other and it speaks a lot to Hunter and Triple H for saying yeah like go ahead support support your friend like I feel like that's not something that would have happened on Vince McMahon's watch so kudos to Hunter for that um, but yeah, I'm super excited to see what Mercedes does in AEW. Obviously, the tone has been set. I think that her implications have kind of been made known from her first night uh, that she is the main event and that whatever title picture she is in is the main event. It's not just about the world title. So whatever she decides to attach herself to, whether that be the TBS title, a feud with Willow Nightingale, whatever. So I believe that you know, there's going to be more great things to come. And I'm just super excited for Mercedes. But let us know how y'all feel in these comments below about the arrival of Mercedes Monet to AEW. But we're going to be moving right along. All right. So, um, unfortunately, uh, for Mercedes Monet, I mean, fortunately for Mercedes Monet, uh, but unfortunately for her, her friend, her former colleague, 
someone she made in WrestleMania with, um, unfortunately has been on the, the, the negative back end of some pretty, pretty harsh racist remarks. I'm talking about Bianca Belair. Uh, there was a post pertaining to uh, WWE 2K24 that was recently posted. And in said comments of the post, um, there were a couple of people who had a lot to say pertaining to Bianca Belair's involvement. So uh, let me read a couple of those comments. So Bianca doesn't, the e, this is E3 Croc saying Bianca doesn't belong, but guess gotta have a black. Clearly we know who did not pass English class. And then the second one was Mr. Matt underscore sorrow. The two on the left referring to Cody and Rhea. Yes, Bianca, absolutely not. So obviously her colleagues, Co-workers, friends came to her defense um, and kind of just talked about how good Bianca was. But I wanted to know your opinion of these racist comments. Well, first and foremost, I felt really terribly sorry for Bianca. I don't think anyone should be subjected to that matter, especially when um, if you look at the work rate that Bianca's put in throughout the, her whole main roster career, um, I feel like she has had almost like comparatively like a legendary career. You know, for yeah. the small amount of time that she has been present on the main roster, we watched this girl main event a WrestleMania, um, win a title, win a Royal Rumble, um, be um, one of three women in a in, in a triple threat in, in a Saudi event. Yeah. Um, we watched her carry the whole women's division when Sasha and Naomi wasn't here. Um we watched her work with some of the best of the best, the faces of the company. Um, she's Carrie Gold. She defended her title. She was always a present face. She was a consistent present face of the company. Um, and I always like admired Bianca as a worker, um, as a person, just everything about her. I, I think would represent otherwise the perfect employee. You never hear anything about Bianca doing anything, uh, anything wrong, anything morally wrong. You never hear about Bianca um, giving the company pushback for even when she gets shitty booking. Um, mm. She's pretty quiet. She's pretty humble. And it's not the first time she's actually been subjected to any like racist comments. Um, it's just probably the first time it's been put on full blast. But she was judged right off the gate when um, she was having her, her, her feud with Becky for crying yeah. out loud. Um, and in those times, similar to most times, but other, um, black female wrestlers, I noticed that people don't typically come into their defense. Um, and it's like quite a lose-lose situation if you ask me, because unfortunately, and, 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 and someone interestingly brought up Maxine. Mm. Um, Maxine got booed out the building recently, and you guys yeah. know about this. And everyone and their mama came to defense for Maxine. But it's quite typical that when Sasha would get ragged on, Naomi would get ragged on, um, Bianca would get ragged on, typically it kind of falls on deaf's ears. Um, and it's and it's unfortunate because if no one else speaks up for them, it's like a lose lose if they want to do. Because I feel as though um, I feel as though there's that unfortunate stereotype that if a black woman speaks up for herself, no matter what way she worded, is she went about it classy, is she just like went off the rails. She gets categorized as the angry black woman, mm -hmm. and you never want to look that way, you know. So. For these poor women, they had to almost like tuck their tail, their tail between their legs and kind of hush about it. So I thought it was a beautiful thing when the locker room came into Bianca's defense, because not only did she deserve that, she most definitely did. I thought it was beautiful that Rhea came out, Big E came out, Zelina came out. All her workers came out because, again, Bianca, like I said, she's quite literally the perfect employee that anyone could ask for. Um, she's given so much to this company. Um, she has created history in this company. Um, she continues to break down barriers for women. Um, and looking at all three of the choices that were on the cover, I'm I'm proud of all three, by the way. I'm a fan of all yeah. three. Um, and I don't want to take away from Rhea. I don't want to take away from Cody necessarily. But if you want to compile what each party has done throughout the year, Bianca has given her all. So the idea that you just feel like this is all like about gentrification, that you just want to tag on a black woman onto a cover just to like mm -hmm. have your token black is a bunch of bullshit, if you ask me. And excuse my French. But it's, it, and it's funny me, me saying that, I'm always swearing on this podcast, but it just irritates me because it's just like, I would be so offended if I'm sitting here putting in the most work 
out of pretty much anyone on this roster currently, out of all the choices, men and women, besides probably like a Roman Reigns at this point, I'm putting in all the work and you're telling me I'm still not good enough. Like, what more do you want Bianca to do? What more is there left for her to do? She's almost did everything. And it's not good enough to be on the cover. Like, what does she want Shorty to do? Hmm. Um, so shout out to everyone that came for Bianca's defense. Um, I'm a huge Bianca Belair fan. So this is not coming from like a, this is not coming from just like me and my stanism. Right. But if you just want to look objectively at the whole thing, it's just a bunch of bullshit and just internalized racism. I don't understand what it is with you guys where you'd be fine with like, I don't know, back in the day, we would get like a Trish Stratus or a Stacey Hubler or someone random on the front cover. We're finally getting women on the front cover of a 2K game. And you guys want to complain about someone that actually put in the proper work rate to earn being on the front. Mm. And I don't see you guys giving the guys this much pushback about being on the front. I really don't. Mm. Um, I don't know what it is with the wrestling community and their internal racism towards black wrestlers, but I feel like we all need to do better. But I felt like it was a strong start with watching the locker room come out and speak in defense of Bianca. So shout out to them, especially to Biggie. Mm. Um, Biggie probably worded it the best for me. Um, and it shouldn't have to take for something to happen, really. It shouldn't have to be. This should be the proper response at all times. And I want to mm. see more of this mm. when I see black women wrestlers be attacked because I don't think it happens enough. Mm. But I want to pass it on to you, Jordan. What do you think about the whole thing? So I think we should start with this idea. I believe that every industry is a microcosm of what we believe as a society at large. So I'm not going to sit up here and say that it's a wrestling problem or a, a, a problem amongst wrestling fans. Because when we look at Western culture and more specifically America, there is a racism problem there. And within that racism problem are multiple layers uh, that, kind of, uh, that kind of explain and dissect why an issue like this is coming to pass. So first, let me just, let me just bring up a couple stats. In NXT, Bianca Belair, out of 99 matches, won, I believe, 92 of those matches. So... Yeah, out of 99, she won 92, I think. Uh, out of, uh, in WWE, I believe that she's won, won 206 matches. She's lost 11. I don't even know this is accurate. Actually, I'm going to go to this because this is actually more accurate. There, She's had 500 matches. Um, a total amount of wins is about 307. Total amount of losses is about 172. About 21 draws, right? In addition to that, in 2023, Bianca Belair was a top merchandise seller in WWE, which means that she was amongst the Roman Reigns, the Rhea Ripley's, people like that. She sold at one point a comparable amount of merchandise to what we consider to be the top stars in WWE. When we look at business, not just in WWE, but in general, you lean into the things that work and Bianca Belair works. Like, if we don't talk about color and we don't talk about all these things, she alone works. And then we could also roll off her WWE accomplishments, right? Royal Rumble winner, SmackDown Women's Champion, Raw Women's Champion, Wrestle WrestleMania main event. Like, she's done it all. She is drama-free. She has her own show. She has been kind of the face of WWE as it pertains to um, press and media. So... I don't understand where the issue comes into play when it comes to, to Bianca Belair and, and why. Actually, no, I do understand. I actually do understand why. I actually do understand why we're getting this feedback, though, and why we're getting this, this kind of pushback on the, be, on the, the Bianca Belair perception, right? This idea that she is a face of WWE and she doesn't deserve it. The one comment that I paid attention to the most is that Bianca doesn't belong. How is someone who has produced great wrestling moments, how is someone who, from a business standpoint, has moved merchandise, has generated a lot of crossover appeal for WWE? We see a lot of people attracted to wrestling because of seeing someone like a Bianca Belair. 
We've seen it on World Star. We've seen it on multiple black media outlets. She has that appeal, right? So how can someone that has that has statistically and numerically generated business for WWE not belong? I'll tell you why. Because of the perception of black people when it comes to any form of success. Because black people have been promoted or, or, or because most people in the world have been conditioned to believe that black people in some way, shape or form are inferior, whether it be through our culture, whether it be through our accomplishments. There is this belief that if you see a black person somewhat, somewhere, if you see a black person in a successful position, uh, well, you know, somebody just had to fulfill a diversity quota or someone just put them in a certain spot. They got that handed to them. They didn't have to work for it. But the reality is that people like us have had to work twice as hard to get in the same positions as our white counterparts. That's just a fact. Now, the fact that Bianca Belair has been pushed as a face of WWE while being a model employee, while being statistically and numerically at the top of WWE, she is a draw. She is a merch seller. The fact that people can pay attention to that and say that she doesn't belong is a microcosm of what they believe about black people in America, which is the fact that regardless of how hard they work, somehow, some way they were given that spot. Somehow, some way they didn't deserve it. It was a diversity quota. It was affirmative action. It was, it, it was diversity, equity, and inclusion. They, they shouldn't be here. And so because of that, we see, and because of that belief, not just with Bianca Belair, but in, in society and entertainment as a whole and at large, we believe that a lot of people who are, you know, black people don't deserve to be in that spot because clearly there was a reason other than particular talent or work that positioned them to be in that spot. So then there's that. Um, now, as it pertains to the wrestlers coming to her defense, I'm so glad that it happened. And I'm so glad because it needed to happen. I felt like they needed to see a Zelina Vega, a Rhea Ripley, a Big E come to the defense of somebody like a Bianca Belair because it shows how much she's truly respected and admired and respected, not just on camera, but behind the scenes. When you have people like that run into your defense, it means it doesn't just mean you're a quality talent. It means you're a quality human being. But the reason why I'm so scared is because you kind of brought it up, right, with Maxine Dupree and 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 this idea that you feel like there was kind of like white, her white counterparts weren't as attacked as Bianca Belair was. And that's because we don't, I mean, if you don't think that black women in general deserve to be protected, you're not going to feel as if they deserve to be protected in entertainment or wrestling or sports. Right. It's not just exclusive to Bianca Belair. We see it with we see it in the WNBA. We see it in women's college sports. We see it in, in, in arts and entertainment. We believe based on how we treat these women, we believe that black women don't deserve protection. And because and, and it may be because of the strong black woman trope, it may be because some internalized racism and misogyny. However, if people at large do not think that black women deserve to be protected at large, then we can't sit here and be surprised when they're not protected in certain industries and in certain fields. Because what happens in these certain industries and certain fields are only just a direct reflection of what we already believe based off of our experiences in the world at large. So um, obviously those racist comments were disgusting. Obviously we like, y'all know how we feel about Bianca Belair. That's our girl. We love her. Um, but yeah, I'm not surprised about this at all because let's face it, like when you have a majority white audience that doesn't, that isn't necessarily to, 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 to being, you know, either politically correct or just being respectful of other people of other walks of life, um, unless they are, then of course they're not going to be as respectful and they're going to say certain things like that. Um, but yeah, that's kind of our thoughts on Bianca Belair. Let us know about how you felt, felt about those racist comments in the comments below, but we're going to be moving on. So in some business-related uh, jargon, according to the Wall Street Journal, 
it seems like WWE has opened its wrestling mat to sponsors. That means that similar to like a UFC, similar to other wrestling promotions like TNA, that they will now have sponsors on the wrestling mat. And WWE's first on mat sponsor is Logan Paul's Prime Drink. Uh, one of the most popular athletic drinks in the world. Obviously, Logan Paul is the current reigning and defending WWE United States champion. So I wanted to know how you felt about sponsors being on the mat. And how do you feel about this new deal featuring Logan Paul? My bad. I was muted. But... <laughs> I kind of saw it coming. I mean, they've been advertising the hell out of Prime for like, what, a year? Maybe yeah. over a year now. Um, and you could tell why Logan Paul is there. Yes, he's really good at what he does, so he kind of fits right in. But I mean, like, he is kind of like a physical marketing strategy. Like, since the second he came there, I mean, we know, like, of his social media um, engagement and the power he has to, yes. you know, he probably has his own sponsors on top of sponsors. Um, I think it's a very smart move to have someone that's already social media savvy yeah. um, be the leader and use their um, their gimmick product as just like a forefront for WWE because it kind of like he does the work. It kind of writes itself. Right. So, I mean, it's pretty cool. It's pretty awesome for him. Um, I think it's a good spot for him. It's a good task for him. I don't see anything wrong in it. Um, I saw a lot of people pretty pissed off about Prime. I've never seen people so mad at a juice before. Um, get over it. <laughs> it's, it's business. Get over it, people. Yeah. I mean, like, it, it does well. I mean, it, it cross-promotes. That's all that we're trying to do here. Cross-promote mm. the drink. Cross-promote the belt. Cross-promote the promotion. Get people to pay attention. Now, every time I walk into a Walmart, I see a Prime, and I can't stop thinking of Logan Paul. It's doing what it's supposed to do. Yeah, mm. put it over there, too, while you're at it. I don't know. I have nothing else to really comment on it, but good for you, Logan Paul. Good on you. <laughs> I was trying to find the statistics pertaining to Prime, but I believe that Prime is one of the highest selling um, athletic related drinks in the world. Is it really? Yeah, is I think it's a free workout or something. I have no idea. Oh, it's a sports complete. drink. It's like a, it's like a fucking um, yeah. A um, Gatorade or whatever. So I, when we talk about Prime, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep looking at it, but like. Prime is one of the most successful beverages in the world at this point. In 2022, this is this is coming from a website. In in the fiscal year of 2022, the Prime Hydration drove an estimated 200 million dollars in retail sales with a gross of 100 million. So they're making money, right? And I believe that because of Logan Paul and just um, Logan Paul, his involvement in WWE and how he's been able to kind of cross brand. You know, not just with his drink, but also with the podcast. There's been a lot of um, WWE superstars, Hall of Famers, alum uh, that are have been on his podcast. Um, obviously, he works in WWE. And then we always see the prime drink being utilized in some way in WWE where he's whether he's bringing it to the ring and he's drinking it or KSI is involved Jesus or um, two billion in annual sales in 2023 is insanity. Insane. And the prime drink. Also, we saw a mascot at one WWE premium live event. So this is kind of like an evolution of that relationship between Logan Paul, his brand and his business relations along with WWE. So I'm not surprised here. The, I think the interesting part about it is just I think people are very, very upset about one is Logan Paul. Right. He's a he is a YouTube sensation. He's a viral sensation. He's someone who has built his brand off of social media. And let's be honest, a lot of wrestling fans are older. They don't really like or gravitate towards his demographic. And because of that, I feel like it's, there's a lot, a lot of just misunderstanding between him and the WWE universe. I also feel as if. When you look at a guy like Logan Paul, I mean, he, he I feel like I feel like what happens in our society is that we we look at people who we, we a lot of people that we don't like often are unliked because subconsciously we resent them because they're able to do things that we are considered that we consider to be morally wrong or just lame or weird. And they're still able to have their way. They're still able to be successful. Right. I feel like Logan Paul is one of those guys where like. He's done everything wrong in the book, and this man is winning. And I, I feel think like that's a, why I like him, Loki. <laughs> right? Is that bad? Like I, I, don't, I don't think it's bad. I, I like Logan Paul, but like it's I feel like, like you hate me 
mean. I'm just gonna do better. Right, exactly. <laughs> it's like you hate me. But that but you but, you're still gonna watch me. That's right. You're still gonna watch me because you wanna see me fail, but I'm still gonna win. But it's like Logan Paul is one of those guys where like this this guy is a natural athlete, great looking guy, what, six five, six, 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 seven, super tall dude, like in shape so you hate me but i'm still talented right so I, i'm what? still like you don't you don't you don't like me but i am just good at everything and i feel like that's the reason why people don't like him like it's that perfect but heel. exactly it. so it's like i feel like that's the reason why people are hating on it also i feel like the whole wrestling mat right i feel like there was a lot of mystique with the wrestling mat that it's kept uncovered that is kept untouched because it's kind of a reverence to the sport right like the moment that you start putting a lot of ads on it it just looks like a walking billboard but i feel like once again this is business we saw wwe and ufc merge to be tko and it was kind of a natural evolution for wwe to adapt some ufc practices ufc has sponsors on the mat okay so i felt like wwe was going to eventually be one of those companies that was going to have sponsors on the mat and guess what if it makes if it makes more money for WWE, then it's going to happen. And it doesn't kind of go against their their brand values or their company values. It's going to happen. And I feel like this is a natural evolution of that relationship. So, you know, it is what it is. But, yeah, that's kind of how I feel about it. But let us know about how you feel about the uh, Logan Paul prime partnership along with – well, Logan Paul and prime partnership with WWE having the Matt branded. Let us know in the comments below. But we're moving on. So, uh, in addition, speaking of WWE, another or well, a couple of other people who have been announced to be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. One of those people is Muhammad Ali. Now, Muhammad Ali, for those of you who are unaware, he was actually involved in the first WrestleMania, in addition to just being one of the greatest combat sports people of all time, one of the greatest boxers of all time, if not the greatest boxer of all time. Him, probably Floyd. You know, uh, Mike Tyson, those are probably the big three. But want to know how you feel about uh, Muhammad Ali's induction into the Hall of Fame. So I thought this was wild random. So I had to actually sit here and look it up on the website to see what else he did. Um, and yeah, I did see, yes, the WrestleMania accolade. But before that, that I found very interesting is them stating that uh, in June 26, 1976, he competed in the World of the Wars, which was an exhibition match against the WWE Hall of Famer Antonio Inoki inside of the Nippon excuse me for pronouncing this wrong <laughs> Bud Budokan Arena in Tokyo, Japan yeah. that's pretty awesome so it goes all the way back and it was like a 15 round I guess um, draw in front of like 32,000 fans which is pretty awesome that happened in Queens oh they had another thing in Queens yeah <laughs> okay so he's been around he's like been around around it wasn't just a one off thing because I think it's stupid when they like they induct people and it's just like a one off thing that they did and it's kind of random yeah although him Obviously, being featured at WrestleMania with, even though I don't like him, Hulk Hogan and Roddy Piper, that's pretty. That's pretty big. Yeah. But I didn't know that he was just around. Like, and I just missed all this. I didn't. I didn't even know that he did any of that. But that's oh, pretty yeah. awesome. Um, I mean, that's pretty. It's, it's good. It's good for him. I mean, I don't watch boxing people. Um, I know of the name. I don't really know too many details of like this man's. You know statistics on here but it's really interesting how wwe has like all these little cross is between different um sports um uh, between different celebrities musicians and all that um the hall of fame is just very intriguing is all i yeah. have to say like it's a it's a very interesting pleasant gradient of actual wrestlers and then just like pop culture um so I'm actually very pleased with all the selections I've been going with this year. Um, I'm not sure if that's all of them. It, did they cap it off yet? Did they let us know that that's just their capped off Hall of Fame? Or do you think we're expecting more surprises to come? I believe that there has been a couple more uh, people that have been announced for the Hall of Fame. One of them is Thunderbolt Patterson. Uh, he was just announced a couple of days ago. Um, yeah, he's another very, very, very famous in the North American territories when we talk about pro wrestling um but i think that that may be capped off i'm not completely sure but it looks like they they have a couple more inductees but it looks like the class is rounding out that's a nice class they got yeah they got a nice class 
So I'm very, very interested to see if they do, if they announce Bray Wyatt last or if he gets announced at all. But as far as Muhammad Ali. I thought he was on the list, no? I I I I I heard a rumor he was going to get inducted with his father for some reason. Well, I mean, his father is getting inducted uh, this year. That that class, I believe he, uh, his father and his tag team partner are being inducted into the Hall of Fame. So I know that his father's being inducted. It makes sense. But I mean, when stuff like that is happening, I feel like. Um, Bray Wyatt was so special that he deserves his own spotlight. I don't think I that want to see just JoJo be... get up and talk about him. Me too, but I feel like it's too fresh. Like you gotta let some time pass. Like even though it's it's felt like a long time, it's pretty quick. But here's what I will say: I feel like Bray deserves his own spotlight. Can he be inducted with his father? Probably, but I I just think that Bray Wyatt was so special. He deserves to headline the class. Now they're in Philly. Paul Heyman is the headliner. Period. Oh. But. I Maybe feel like Bray year. deserves his own stuff. Yeah, probably next year. So, I mean, I'm I'm waiting on that. Now, as it pertains to Muhammad Ali, um, well-deserved. Uh, he passed away in 2016, unfortunately. Um, but he was someone who was not only influential in the world of combat sports, but pro wrestling as well. When you are the foundation of, a, of an event like WrestleMania, you help set the tone. And that first WrestleMania was uh, the, the, the beginning of the WrestleMania brand. It was the dream that Vince McMahon had of integrating all forms of arts, sports, and entertainment into this one big wrestling event at Madison Square Garden. And right, he was, you can, you can, him, probably uh, Mr. T were probably the first two celebrities to really take center stage in an event like that. And it's because of that we see people like Snoop Dogg. It's because of that we have like rumors of Cardi B being involved, people like Snooki. People like, oh, man, there's so many celebrities that have gone through the WWE doors, even Kevin Hart and people like that. Muhammad Ali was a part of that foundation that helped set the precedent for WWE as well as WrestleMania as a brand to incorporate celebrities into pro wrestling. And for that, he deserves to be in the WWE Hall of Fame. But, yeah, I'm really, really excited for him. I'm happy for him. Um, and I'm looking forward to see how this class rounds out. But let us know how you feel about Muhammad Ali being inducted into the WB Hall of Fame. But we are moving on. So uh, in a little bit of a drama, it seems as if CJ Perry and Miro have are getting a divorce. After seven years of marriage, they have announced their split. Um, feelings? How do you feel about this? I mean... It's very unfortunate that they split. Um, so I'm very sorry to either or party. Hopefully, you know, nothing mm. wrong went on, such as infidelity or any yeah. of that. But like, no disrespect, when I've seen them together, they never once felt like to me, even when they were on Total Divas, and I doubt you probably actually sat there and watched everything, it never felt like they went with each other. It always kind of just looked like it was a setup where, like, yeah, they're cool. And, you know, um, I could see, like, the lust being there for either or party. But it didn't, like, feel – I don't know how to explain it. Like, sometimes you see certain couples on on screen where the chemistry is just so white hot and it goes with each other. You just feel the love through the screen. Like, that's how I feel when I've seen um, – Bianca and Montez on screen. Um, even um, like I saw Daniel Bryan and Bree's um, dynamic. Like I could tell that that they for real, for real love each other. They for real, for real like each other. Right. Um, I'm not saying that he didn't like each other. They didn't like each other. I just feel like yeah, something just seemed off. But you know, I'm not about to sit there and judge every single couple's business. But I do think it's an eyebrow raiser. Yeah. That they never had kids. <laughs> to me. To be together for seven years, you both had a lot of money. Um, one of you guys got fired years ago. Um, the other person making way more money at a new company. Uh, it, it, I just thought it was weird they never had kids. So I feel like that was yeah. like one of the telltale signs for me, personally. Um, I can't name to you what would have been a possible reason. Um, some people are saying, oh, well, it could have been Miro since he's in the AEW locker room and there's some stuff that'd be going on over there since it's pretty messy. Right. Some people think that it's Lana always being promiscuous or whatnot. He probably got tired of it. I don't know what the reason is. Um, that's also none of my business, whatever it is. Um, just no, no relationship or marriage ending is obviously, especially a marriage ending is a great feeling because it definitely comes with a lot of paperwork money um mm. and it kind of just feels like you kind of like did all some all this for what you know um so i hope that both parties um 
through their divorce, learn to find happiness and they find their person, they find their partner. Um, I don't really want to rag on them because there's no reason to. Mm -hmm. Um, But it it really just caught me by surprise Um, because she just showed up to AEW within the the calendar year, Mm -hmm. not mistaken. So it's just like, all right, what possibly went wrong? Again, do do I I bother asking what went wrong? Yeah. You know, Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. (laughs) No, no, no. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. No, I'm just saying some people are saying, oh, well, I knew that they didn't actually have love for each other when uh, he watched his wife get slutted down in the E and stuff like that. Like, you know, no grown man could watch their wife get kissed by another man or be in these physical storylines with another man. And listen, I kind of thought that was questionable, too. But I was like, I'm not going to judge. It's not my marriage. You know, maybe they're into that. (laughs) Maybe they talk about it after. I don't know. I don't know. Do you got any other thoughts? (laughs) So I think the first thing that comes to mind is that, you know, in marriage, in love and in life, sometimes people grow apart. It happens. Um, One of the things that I noticed over the past three to four years is Miro's faith, right? He's a born again Christian, just like I am. Um, And so when you kind of adopt a faith, you take on a new set of values. And what becomes tricky is sometimes... You, you become born again, you become a believer, and your values aren't in alignment with your partners. And now you have to question everything, right? If I want to live this life, that means if I want to live this life, I can't just have anyone around me. I have to, you know, I have to make it known what side I stand on and what I stand for. Um, so I think that that could have definitely been a variable. But also, I just feel like I I just also feel like it could have just been a personal thing, right? Like, I feel like you live, you love, you learn. Sometimes you realize certain things aren't for you. And that could have been one of those things in that case. Nevertheless, though, I'm very, very interested to see what comes of this. Because if they are agreeing to still be on-screen characters, what's going to come from this can be very interesting. The Miro, the Miro, CJ Perry story, I feel like, has been dramatically enhanced now that we know that they're separate or that they've had a divorce. I think it's going to be really, really interesting. Maybe they're cool and they're friends. We also yeah. don't know that part. Yeah, I was about to say, it seems, I think CJ actually mentioned it in a statement that they're going to move forward as friends and on screen characters. So, you know, they have that intact. You know, I don't feel like if, if something was bad, I, I, I feel like you wouldn't want to be somebody's friend. But, you know, that's just the meaning. I don't thing. think Tony would be that cruel to put two people that just got divorced like, yeah. on screen with each other. But, I mean, hey, I mean, if it's if, if AEW is a creative control-centric environment, you know, and if that's something that they want to do, then, you know, who's, you know, I don't think Tony's going to get in the way of that. But, you know, we'll see what happens. I'm very, very interested to see what comes of this. But let us know how you feel about the Miro C.J. Perry uh divorce in the comments below but we're going to be moving on because this past we're just going to bundle these next two topics because this is just like a very pop culture-esque moment all right this past monday night wwe was in houston texas home of a lot of famous celebrities rappers one in particular is one of the biggest rappers in the world mr travis scott and in addition to that Uh, We saw John Cena, The Rock, and Bad Bunny appear at the Oscars. Uh, Even John Cena had a moment where he appeared in the nude, um, announcing nominees for, I believe, a costume-related nomination. So I wanted to kind of get your opinion on this pop culture WWE integration, especially over the past couple of weeks. Uh, Well, I'm going to go, I guess, piece by piece. Um, Travis Scott was really random to me. But but I couldn't tell if they like just threw him just because he was a rapper and he was probably easy to get into contact with, or mm-hmm. was he a fan? But then the second that DX music cued, he became such a, like, a little kid. <laughs> the way he stood up and started throwing up the ass, he just had like the most childish smile on his face, and then it, it just warmed my heart because I just love seeing grown people that you could tell they grew up being wrestling fans, and you just watch like the kid just bleed out of them. I just I just yeah. I love watching it. It makes me so happy. I love seeing rappers have title belts and stuff like that um i love when rappers drop wrestling bars um yeah. <laughs> i love when they show no seriously i love when they come out and they're 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 standing by, beside whatever wrestler that they're representing sometimes and they're just hype with them like as if it's their entrance to like like i don't know it's just cute it's really cute so um i'm not a huge fan of travis scott as an individual especially with that whole astro world thing but it was just like just a genuine wholesome moment to see him get hyped while he was at the show to see the, his backstage interaction with Jey Uso or whatnot. He mm-hmm. just looked like he was just happy to be there. And yeah. I like when celebrities come out and they seem like they're pretty um, 
humble and happy for the opportunity to invite out to the WWE. So, um, I mean, it's cool, but it's nothing new for WWE to integrate pop culture. I mean, it's always been an ongoing thing. Now, it's very interesting that you mentioned John Cena because um, for some reason it blew up on social media that he was butt-ass naked delivering, I think, I guess, the Oscar or something. He was in character, clearly. Right. Um, My first thought was... Uh, tied over to the OnlyFans that was dropped from like two, three <laughs> weeks ago. And then somebody had informed me that it was part of his character and he's just really committed to the role. But for mm. some reason, the internet just made this into a whole Illuminati talk yet again and said that he sold his <laughs> soul to the devil. Um, and I'm just like, I, isn't he just playing a role? Like, he's John Cena. You know, um, he can't keep the WWE, like, polish and sheen on forever. And it's not like we haven't seen this man naked in, in, in some other movies. He he was naked in the Peacemaker. Not, not, not in a movie. Uh, the show Peacemaker. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, he's already been uh, slowly but surely growing out of his box of just looking, you know, constantly PG. And it's right. not like we, he started off PG. Like, this man has some wild-ass bars back in his thugonomics days, all right? So, to mm-hmm. me, I didn't, like, I wasn't gagging. I did gag at the OnlyFans because John, John, John was talking about this. Especially what, like, especially when I saw the captions to the OnlyFans polls. I'm like, yo, John, you got to chill out. But for that. him to be presenting naked, I, I thought it was comedic. I thought it was funny. I thought it was cool. Um, Obviously, he's long gone and moved on from... WWE he's just being a comedy act and he's just enjoying whatever he's doing whatever role I mean it seemed like he was having fun but um I love the fact that WWE is kind of becoming more and more mainstream by interacting I guess more with bigger stages bigger companies bigger stars Again, I guess it kind of circles back to our previous points on other shows, but it's as if wrestling is getting cool again. Yeah, um, agreed. I, I, I think on, on the on the topic of the Oscars, we have to mention Megan Thee Stallion and Sasha Banks being at the anime convention. Yeah, yeah, that, very true. That's what really put me over. Oh my god, seeing them beside one another because we already got Bianca next to Megan Thee Stallion a couple of years ago, and that that popped me because those are both my girls. Again, Sasha, right, and Megan, them both anime fans. You know, I loved it, and they presented Sasha to not only you know just be a, a, a an actor. They definitely they definitely doubled down on her being um a, a professional wrestler. It's cool. It's cool to see wrestling become mainstream again. I love it. I adore it. Um. Let's do more of it. But I would like to see WWE like actually incorporate more um female rappers into, you know, their show. I always like they always select the male rapper, which I have no issue with. Mm-hmm. But like get Megan on if you see she's already cool with Sasha and she's already cool with Bianca. She had her few interactions. Like get yeah. some of the girls out. Like I wanna see that. Get that in a in a WrestleMania entrance. I'm excited to see that. You know, I feel like that will also reel in some views. What do you think about it? First of all, I want to first capitalize off of what you said. Stop waiting until things become safe to make it a part of your product. We always see this, right? Like, because at one point, male rappers weren't really in WWE either until it was considered safe and not taboo. And I feel like because of the nature of women in rap and the content matter, which is irrelevant, but I feel like they're waiting for it to get safe. And while they're waiting for it to get safe, they're missing out on very, 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 very important potential partnerships, whether it's Megan, whether it's Cardi, they have a chance to do so much because clearly these are very, 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 very big public figures who have had wrestling a part of their lives since they were since they were children. So just loop them in. Stop waiting until things become safe to make them a part of your product. Now, moving on to everything else. Um, when it comes to the John Cena naked costume uh, aspect, he was presenting for best costume design, by the way, which is the reason why he came out naked. But the reason why it turns out that he came out naked was to draw attention to the gender pay gap in Hollywood, uh, specifically amongst Hollywood costume designers for years. Um, so and then and it's mostly kind of in, in relation to what is the costume designers guild. Their pay equity slogan is you're naked without us. So while he was being funny and he was doing a little kiki and a little ha ha, this was actually to, to, to draw attention to actually a much bigger issue. I and I think that. that that's super admirable of him. And I love that he's standing up for something 
when he's not necessarily required to. Was this said in the interview? Uh, so this was said in the actual in the article. Y'all could check Indie Wire right now and look that up. It says naked John Cena. Uh, yeah, how poor because social media is mad at him. <laughs> how poor things and John Cena made the 2024 Oscars about the gender pay gap. So you know, and then obviously with the Rock, like the Rock is Hollywood. He's one of the highest paid figures ever in Hollywood. So it's no surprise that he was there. Bad Bunny, another major pivotal entertainment figure who was at the Oscars. But the fact that we're seeing more and more figures from WWE at the Oscars shows how pivotal this Nick Khan involvement is because it's the fact that he has been involved in the entertainment industry that allows WWE and entertainment to connect the way that it's connecting right now. As it pertains to Travis Scott, Travis Scott is a big, big wrestling fan. In fact, his label and his brand is called Cactus Jack. Obviously inspired by the great Mick Foley. He has been a very, very vocal wrestling fan. And, you know, it's kind of in alignment with his brand. If you go to his shows, you can tell that it's a very high energy, high octane environment. So the fact that he was at a wrestling show doesn't surprise me at all. It's a part of who he is. He's just a hype, rageful guy. And I love that for him. Um, But yeah, like it's really, really all it's always great to see wrestling and pop culture collide. Um especially when there are people that look like us involved. And when it pertains to, as it pertains to Mercedes and Megan, um, I love the fact that Mercedes is putting herself out there, not just as a pro wrestler, but as an overall entertainment figure. And she's doing it without the WWE platform. I think we've kind of talked about this before, but I felt like there was this stigma where you had to go to WWE if you wanted to be the wrestler who crosses over. But now Mercedes being in AEW, being seen at these conventions is saying, listen, I could cross over with or without you. That's not the point. I'm Mercedes Monet. I'm going to be money everywhere I go. And I am the platform, not y'all. So I think that the fact that Mercedes is being seen in all these lights and in all these ways is just very, very important, especially for wrestlers who are under the perception that uh, you have to be in WWE in order to cross over to mainstream media. Um, But yeah. That is about that. So if y'all have any thoughts about wrestling and pop culture, let us know in the comments below. But thank y'all so much for tuning in to this latest episode of Culture 316. Super glad you guys are joining us. You have some great things coming up. And we'll see you next week. Boop, 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 boop.